it's probably not new news to you that to Delete Laws put out a video yesterday with uh, various telephone conversations between himself and the Dollar Hides. Now, obviously, Jose Maria de Castro is his usual self and all over the place and doesn't know facts. So he complicated matters. However, I was surprised that at least one commentator channel also seems to want to complicate matters and not get a basic understanding of the actual facts. So let's go with this video. Because he doesn't cooperate with cops, he's neglecting his daughter? Yeah, and not cooperating with DHS, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, because they went to the jail and he didn't talk to them. So I'm going to go through the video in the order that he put it out rather than chop it and change it. Uh, the first bit I wanted to draw attention to was the call between him and Heather highlighted the fact that uh, there was a risk of his daughter being taken at this point. However, we later found out the daughter has been taken by DHS. Not talk to them. Do not no, answer I've... any questions. Do not let them in your house. Do not answer the door. Chile, the expert on how to deal with DHS, the man with no children. So has this all, was it 2019 or 2020 when Jason was first, when you guys encountered, was that a Norman cop or was that? With that question, Chile shows his inability to either research cases or retain information because he should know, and we all know, or anyone that's interested in this knows that the watching deer incident, it was a highway patrol cop and he's named in the lawsuit named Dickens. And so the other day when he got pulled over and he got arrested, why were they pulling him over that time for an old warrant for what? I wasn't sure what that was about. Well, Chile, you should have the frogs trifold because it would tell you everything you need to know about Jason Dollarhide. And if we look down the bottom in the orange, you will note there was an offence committed on the 21st of May, for which one was issued on the 26th of June 2023 for assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, bond at $85,000. For um, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, something okay, happened. Okay, so he had an altercation with someone in the parking lot at Homeland. Did he hit anybody yeah. with his car? I'm not sure how that's a charge. Oh dear, Chili. Right, right. So I've cut that down quite a bit, but uh, basically, she goes through a story of Jason being accused of hitting someone with his car in a parking lot, but someone else is so confused, and they should really do their research. So in the backyard. What? what? What was the date of that Homeland incident? And is there any video footage? What? That, this is making. Was... This is making no sense. I think this is a completely different charge. And also, yeah. I think this is a completely made up pile of bullshit because he was at the grocery store, something happened, the police were called, but then he's mysteriously at home and throws the police, closes the door on the police and tells them to get the hell off his property. It's not hard to follow with the frogs handy dandy trifold because. An offence is alleged to have been committed on the 21st of May, one issued on the 26th of June, for the charge of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. We're assuming it's the car. And this wasn't served on Jason until the 15th of July. Because both events, the assault with the dangerous weapon... And the day that he was eventually arrested, both events involve trips back from the grocery store, doesn't make it complicated. It does make sense that on the 21st of May, the cops went to Jason's house and he told them to get off his front porch. And then later on the 26th of June, the warrant was issued. And as we know, the arrest occurred on the 15th of July. Get the frog's handy dandy trifold. Um well I it, wonder it, it, if Go ahead. The, I wonder if the this assault, whole gap the assault and battery with a dangerous weapon isn't necessarily a car, but an actual weapon that could add, be what started it. 
just to add that this story does match what Heather has previously said. So this is the Welsh News Network, if you're not sure who it is. You have Dan, second top, and the clown below him is Jim Finch, who almost gets onto the right direction, but manages to swerve and make an error. She said she got groceries because Jason was bringing them home when he was arrested. So the groceries were from that. So it may have been he had the incident at the store. Cops follow him yeah, home. It... Unfortunately, Jim didn't then take the step back that it occurred on another date. And Dan stepped in to further muddy the waters. Um... It doesn't match. He never made it into the house. We know this. Yeah, we know. So there that is part is literal visual footage of him being arrested outside his home. He never made it inside. Hmm. He's literally at the front of his vehicle. So Dan is now talking about what occurred on the 15th of July. But but as I keep on saying, the assault with a dangerous weapon occurred on the 21st of May. That's not rocket science. Come on, guys. I thought he was in the backyard near a trampoline. No, the front of his vehicle. And the traffic violations were what he did while he was eluding. We, I mm -hmm. only assumed it was because he created the traffic violations and that's why they were trying to stop him. But this story is very iffy. But let's go on. Okay. So Becca almost got them back on track because... It's probable that the traffic charges, which are in that block of red charges, occurred on the 15th of July, not the date he committed the assault with the dangerous weapon, but the date that he was actually arrested. Uh, now, I'm not certain about any of those charges. There are no cases for any of those charges on file. So I don't know if the DA is going to drop them and we're going to see that they include the child and get one with no bond if we're going to see them drop out. But that's what the jail shows. So those are the traffic offences. But the Welsh News Network is very confused. Now, I expect Chiddy to be very muddled because he doesn't do his research, but I don't really expect commentators to be this muddled and thus mislead the people that are watching their channels. And please don't be misled, people. I suppose there are some that just want to watch story time and donate cash. Uh, you do you. I'll try and do the facts. Before I move back to Chiddy's video, just have a look at the frogs handy dandy trifold and the bit that I haven't drawn attention to which is that sort of greeny colour which were the cases that were open from previous offences and there are bonds on them those are actual cases that have yet to be adjudicated. For all creators or others who find it difficult to keep up you can purchase my handy dandy frog trifold from my website and I ship direct from California on indestructible paper. Thank you very much. Well, they didn't file the charges until July or June 26th, and the actual incident was... We never got to find out because Chibi interrupted. And who filed charges? Before. And that was how he interrupted her. She was looking. ...today on some trumped-up bogus charges of vehicular uh, uh, assault? The rest of this video is probably going to be me just picking out very short clips of Chili being stupid. I mean, how can he know that they're bogus charges of vehicle assault? Jason may well have hit someone with his car. We don't know. Yes, they said that he crashed into somebody with his Tahoe. Is that true? No. Why does he think he can trust what she says? So this is July of 2022, correct? Mm -hmm. Was it 2022 or 2023? 2023. Keep up, Chili. Get the frog's handy dandy trifold. Well, she's a part yes, of a public case now. Who's her husband? She has she ties to the police the, department? 
You need to find out his name because I'm going to find out who these people are and I'm going to find out what their ties to the community are there in Norman. Guarantee you they have a connection to the police department or the Norman pigs or the state police pigs. Chili is zeroing in on a family and the wife of the husband has a VPO against Jason Dollarhide. Very sensible, Chili. Very sensible. We have to find out who she get her. What's her name again? Okay, I'm gonna give her a call tomorrow, and we don't know her husband's name. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this through my people. I got her right here. Here's all of her okay. details. I got all of her details right here. Well, I'm gonna come there and interview her and ask her. I everything. I got everything that I got everything. Okay. They're saying that she's being neglected because of the violence that goes on in front of her with the police department. That is not <laughs> our violence, that is their violence. Funny ha-ha, Chili. But have you seen how Jason reacts when a cop just touches him? It's Jason who escalates, and you probably encourage that, Chili. It's all lies. It's all fabricated lies. It's all crap. All of it. Every bit. So... You couldn't possibly know whether it is or isn't Chili. Got me be looking at be getting sued. That's what might happen to those people. That's what should happen to those Good. people. That's exactly what yeah. should happen to those people. For they stalking a member of the press, I have every right to reach out to me. So I will. I'll find her. And I'll find her daughter. And I'll find her husband. And I'll ask them all what's going on. It's a matter of public okay. interest. Then your court hearing tomorrow is misdemeanor hearing, right? Yes, it's for trespassing and obstruction. I think there's another charge, isn't there, Heather? You weren't honest, were you? So tomorrow I want, you know, if I were you, tomorrow if I were you, I would request a continuance because you have now raised the money to hire yourself your own attorney. And in the interest of justice, you would like an extension so you could get your attorney okay. on the case. I'm not prepared okay. to deal with these charges. I'm not a pro per. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not representing myself in pro per here. I, I'm not qualified to represent myself. Uh, some people have raised some money for me and i'm now in the process of finding an attorney for my case in the end so this took up quite a part of the uh, phone call and his video where he's i think getting close to advising heather legally because he's advising her what to say to the judge he kept on repeating himself and getting her to write it down i had no idea why he just didn't text her and then the judge will ask you a bunch of other questions. He'll try to steer you in different directions. You, if I were you, answer exactly like a politician. Your Honor, let me repeat my statement. The judge is going to try to do anything he can to cheat you. The judges in this country are corrupt to the core. I you already lost one child for your ex-husband. He has custody, right? I won't stop on this. Okay. I may have to come to Oklahoma. I got to call somebody back to see what we can do. All right. Don't bring your daughter to court tomorrow. I'm not. I never do. Go drop that kid off at a certain, at a, at a secret look and, and watch, make sure you're not followed or tailed. Right. Now on to the next bit of intrigue, which was, uh, I think, Trilly advising Heather to move her child into secret so that DHS couldn't get her. I don't know if there's some interstate federal conspiracy laws. Okay. I would even meet the person in a car in a third part in a third party location before they take Avery back to the safe place. Okay. The state's trying to get you, honey. So we got to fight. Yeah. Right now on to another phone call he has with Heather. And by this point, DHS have turned up and taken the child away. They showed up in a bunch of vans, right? They know they showed up with five police and, um, just a white car. They've been they they wait for you to walk out the house so they can grab you before you get so you don't lock yourself in the house. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to tell you what's going on on, on the back end channels here, but I've been talking to a couple of different people to do a fundraiser for you to raise twenty to fifty grand to hire a real attorney. Uh, like and the grift continues. Yeah, so scan that paperwork into me and let me take a look at it. We got to find you a real lawyer. So you're. Okay. And you're going to have to find a lawyer that can take on this whole case. And your right. charges, Jason's charges, so it's going to be between 20 and 50. You want to find a, I mean, you need a, a, a lawyer for the Avery hearing, but what's he going to, you know, um, you're going to have to have that lawyer, but but what what what, what are you guys going to do for the overall, for your charges for nothing? You've been charged for nothing. Right. You've been charged because the cops have been targeting you. And you got to find a decent lawyer, like a 25 to $50,000 lawyer. 
because they she knew they were going to try to take her? Yes, she knows we have a DHS hearing. I, I couldn't believe it when I heard that she'd told her daughter, who's only six, about this in advance. I I tried to prepare her for the worst. Wow, and they don't. Right. They now we, you know what? They got your phones tapped. Listen right now. They're listening right now. You need to go yeah. buy. You need to go I, buy a phone. That, okay. they, that, think about it. Got your phones tapped. They're listening in right now. Mm -hmm. Got to go buy a, a burner phone. Been Paranoia is a wonderful thing. This took me back to OG two times and him and his dad searching their uh, fuel cap for a tracking device. Jeez. But I can tell you what, Norman PD, I'll see you mother soon. And I'm bringing me and my big brass band. And when I come, others come. So yep. I'll see you soon, Norman. I'll see you listening, tapping the phone pigs. I'll see you real soon. And I got a whole team of people working with me. So you mother with me, I can't wait. I will sue every single one of you last mother. They're listening to your phone calls. It's the only way they knew. Okay, on to the last phone call, and this was with Jason Dollarhide. Because they have a guardian. They have a guardian for the other three children. This confused me a bit because I think Heather only talked about one other child, but uh, it appears there may be multiple children that uh, she doesn't have custody of for, and there's got to be a reason for that. Right. A guardianship, and we've been fighting it for over seven years. Uh, and, and if that an imminent uh, emergency exists, and they just took her. I mean, I'm in jail. My wife was at the house. I know, dude. I know. No, I, I, I'm, what I'm saying is it's a rhetorical question. There's no emergency. There's yeah, no it's, it's, I, I don't know why. It says a failure to cooperate with the DHS guy. Perhaps at some point when you come out, Jason, you'll learn that Delete Laws is not the person to take advice from. So your cell phone that I talked to your wife on is tapped. Yeah. Yeah, it's tapped. They're listening in on phone calls. Because Heather, yeah. Heather and I were talking about some stuff, and then they uh, they knew what we were talking about. So I hope you weren't conspiring to commit a criminal offence, Chili. Right, I think that will do. I tried to condense it down. There was quite a lot of good stuff, but I think I've got most of it summarised. And obviously, if you have got to this stage, don't forget to go out and buy my handy-dandy frog trifold. Thanks for watching.